The Second Sunday of Advent Last Sunday's Old Testament reading called for hope in God in the face of looming destruction and the exile of Judah. Today we hear the joyful message of Baruch, proclaiming the divine rescue and restoration will soon be accomplished. Through Jeremiah names Baruch as the prophet's secretary. The book of Baruch collects several different writings, which mostly composed of after Judah's exile. While Baruch anticipates the end of captivity, Psalm 126 looks back on God's deliverance as an accomplished fact. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, our mouth was filled with laughter. The book of Baruch as a whole is instructive. Its unknown editor gathered various compositions reflecting the experience of captivity itself, the people's liberation, and the reasons leading to Judah's downfall. Principal among such reasons were repeated lapses in an idolatry. When God seemed unresponsive to the people's wishes or demands, they looked elsewhere for meeting and liberation from life's difficulties. Baruch reminds us that those already rescued from exile, that they may not return to their former ways of unfaithfulness. Similar, St. Paul speaks to the Christians who know that God has already brought salvation final through Christ Jesus. He reminds us that it is in day-to-day lives they must grow to good work. Christ has already begun in them. As they remember Christ's coming in history, their love must increase ever more in the present, so they may rejoice in the final completion of God's work of salvation on the future day of Christ. We, too, know that Christ already come, bringing God's presence and power into the world. We, too, must live today in the divine presence, looking forward to its fullness. Against a backdrop of geography, politics, and history, Luke ushers the adult John the Baptist into the Jordan stage. Last Sunday's Gospel announced the advent or arrival of Jesus at the end of human history. Today as watchman and awakener, John announces the advent salvation and consolation to the people, proclaiming that their hope for the dawn of the Messiah time is near. In searching for ways to communicate John's significance, Luke and the other Gospel writers found in the most appropriate to use the words of the second Isaiah, with the prophet begins the book of consolation of Israel. John's is the voice that after four centuries of prophetic silence, heralds the coming of God's salvation, not only to Israel, but to all humankind. In the insignificant and troubleshooting pockets of the Roman Empire, John starts to shout his message throughout the district all around the Jordan River.